It's good to see you today. I appreciate you joining us for another brief look into God's Word. Today we're going to be looking in Proverbs. Today's on Wednesday. On Wednesdays we usually look in the Proverbs. So come on with us and we're going to be thinking about being prompt with discipline today. We're going to be looking in Proverbs chapter 13 at verse 24. If you would like to be looking in your Bibles with us, I'll have it up on the screen, of course. But let's just get over there and let's just read that single verse. Proverbs 13 at verse 24 it says, he who spares his rod, he who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. So just a simple verse, but at the same time, uh, of course, hope you recognize this verse is not very popular in this day and age. This verse does not have very many adherents, uh, of course, either. Nonetheless, it is God's word, and hopefully we recognize that God is a whole lot wiser than man. So, to think about discipline, and to think about what, what the verse is talking about, consider just a few points. One is this, love disciplines. It's, again, it's a simple verse, but it says what it says. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Love disciplines. Sometimes people have the idea that love and discipline are, are actually um, at opposite ends of the spectrum, and, that, and that's simply not the case. What we see from this passage is that this is what love does. People think that discipline, um, and, and we'll go ahead and put our second point up there, it is hate that spares. Right, as we think about raising our children, which is the context of this verse, needless to say, we'll make some applications here in, here in just a moment. But as we look at this passage, it is love that disciplines, it is hate that spares. And what ends up happening inevitably is that people usually get it just backwards. They think that it is love that spares and that it is hate that disciplines. Right? Some people are just absolutely, that, that's just absolutely, I don't know of another way to put it, than devilish. The, the, these are the devil's lies. The devil says, no, it's love that spares and, and it's hate that disciplines. No, it's just the opposite. The Lord says it's love that disciplines and it's hate that spares. And love disciplines promptly. And I wanted you to consider that idea. Certainly, when when discipline is in order. We may be patient waiting for the fruits to come, right? In time, in time. We recognize that. But you know, when you have a child that acts up, when you have a child that misbehaves, do you, do you discipline them right then or do you wait a day or two? Or do you wait a week or two? Or do you wait a year or two? Okay? Love disciplines promptly, is what the passage says. And to, to think about it, you have to connect the discipline with the misbehavior. You have to connect the discipline in the child's mind with what they have done that is not acceptable and is wrong. That's what you have to do. That's why you discipline promptly. Another reason you discipline, discipline them promptly is because you do not want them to keep up doing, you don't want them to keep doing what they are doing. So you, so you do what you can to stop it. Love disciplines promptly. People have everything just backwards. And it's, I suppose it's always been like that, but it sure seems like it's worse in this day and age. Love disciplines. People think, oh, how can you be so judgmental? How can you be so hateful? When you actually rebuke something, they think that rebuking something is hateful. And it's just simply not the case. You rebuke because of love. Frankly, if we wanted people to go to hell, if we want people to go to hell, we should just not say anything. We should spare them, right, in that sense. We should not rebuke them. We should not tell them that they're doing something wrong. If we want them to go to hell, if we hate them, that's what we should do, because hate spares. It is love that disciplines and it is love that disciplines promptly. The rod is painful. 
People, people are averse to discipline, both on the giving and the receiving end of it, um, because frankly, it's hard. It's hard, it's confrontational, it's filled with conflict, all those things. The rod is painful. That's right. That's right. It absolutely is painful. It's meant to be painful. But here we have our verse. He who, as the verse says, he who spares his rod hates his son. But he who loves him disciplines him promptly. I'd like to read a passage before we leave today from the book of Hebrews that talks about discipline. And it ties in the discipline that we received from our parents with the discipline that we receive from God. This is Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 12, as it says in verse 4, You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Right? He's, he's encouraging them. He's encouraging them, but at the same time, he's rebuking them. He says, You have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every soul, every son, pardon me, whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. That's pretty powerful language. Verse 9, furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For, in, for they indeed, talking about our, our earthly fathers, for they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, um, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Discipline, whether we're talking about our human fathers or whether we're talking about our heavenly father. Discipline is painful, but it is what love does. And if we do not endure chastening, then frankly, we are treating ourselves and we're treating like the Lord like he is not our father. Love disciplines promptly. We are patient in waiting for the fruits of repentance. Okay, we understand that. Because sometimes those fruits take time. But the, but the discipline itself should be prompt. It should be prompt. So how does this apply? Does it apply to, to our families? To, to think about raising children, obviously. Obviously it applies to that situation. Does discipline, always, does discipline also come up as we deal with our friends? You know, sometimes friends are afraid to say no. Sometimes friends are afraid to rebuke their friends. Well, this is what love does. This is what love does. It's not enjoyable. You might lose friends. But if you really, if you really love them, this is what you'll do. Does this affect the church? You might think about leadership within the church. Elders, deacons, the, the role that elders have. You might think about just individuals in the church. If your brother sins against you, what are you supposed to do? Go to him and rebuke him, the passage says. This is what love does. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Those who refuse to do that, what they're really showing is they don't love their brother. They are allowing them to remain in sin, putting their souls in eternal danger. Does that sound loving? No, that's actually hateful. It is hate that spares. It is love that disciplines. It's not enjoyable, but it does yield the peaceable fruit by those for those who have been trained by it. And that's really the point. It's training. It's discipline. You can't be a disciple without discipline. I hope this study has been beneficial for you. Hope you have a good day. Appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you tune in tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word. Thanks for being with us today.